What is going on everybody? This is Sanji and welcome to the TOS Gear Progression guys. In this video, I am going to show you guys how to invent the silver efficiently to power up your character. This topic will also include how to gear up your character from the bottom all the way to the top, how to advance the tripping points for your skill properly, as well as which specific gear that you should look into based on your character role. These are some of the roles that you might be familiar with when it comes to MRPG, just that DPS, support, and farmer. I also will break down specific gear options as you get into early, mid, and late game for 3 of Savior. Additionally, I will also include specific link to some of the builds that I talk about in this video just in case if you're interested in building one for yourself. Now first thing first, let me go ahead and break down these 3 specific roles that I talked about earlier such as DPS, Support, and Silver Farmers. A DPS role is referring to a damage dealer who can contribute a lot of damage to the party. This role is very important because it is essential to server specific in-game contents like in Unique and Legend Rain, Shadow Modes, Dimensional Collapse Point, Uphill Defense, and etc. Some of the most general DPS builds that you might be familiar with such as Druid, Crusaders, and Exorcist for Cleric, Doppler, Barbarian, Plus and Blader for Swordsman, Pyromancer, Elementalist, and Talus for Wizards, Bullet Marker, Leaker, and Corsair for Scout, and Ranger, Fletcher, and Merchant for Archer. For the support role which include healer, buffer, and debuffer, a healer is someone who will be spending most of the time keeping the party alive as much as possible, a buffer is someone who offers a huge amount of status bonuses to the party, and a debuffer is someone who can enhance the party's DPS as well as applying crowd control status like stun, freeze, slows, and etc. For a healer build, I highly recommend looking into PDD or Priest, Druid, and Deputy builds. This build offers a simple healing mechanic such as uptime healing capability with Grass Art, Revival Kit, Kuna Reduction Buffs, and Buffing Tool like Blessing, Sacraments, Aspiration, and so on. Another build you can do for a healer is a Priest, Oracle, and Deputy. This is a great endgame healer build which provides a huge area healing capability, magical defense tool, and damage buff and debuff for your party. There are other type of buffing and debuffing builds such as Dom, Crochier, Enchanter for Scout. This build is generally focused on swelling the monster, damage debuff, as well as providing additional silver drop for being a party leader as a Crochier. Appraiser, Falconer, and Hunter for an Archer build. This build heavily focused on providing additional beast damage, reduced enemy critical resistance, as well as boosting enchantment value to increase the party DPS even further. Psychromancer, Omigochi, and Psycho Kino for the Wizard build. I honestly find this build extremely rare for the party, but this build offers a lot of debuff tools for challenge modes, especially for episode 12 maps like West Jungle and Shelter. And lastly, we have Silver Farmer, which I will refer to a character that solely focuses on silver farming on the Pacific map like Hunting Ground, such as Outer Wall Sewer, Irradiant Shelters, and Bob's Cape. A good example of a silver farmer would be my silver farming videos where I use Rachel, Enchanter, and Dharma builds with a squad character on the Bob's Cape map. This map can get extremely populated due to the fact that the silver drop rate is extremely high and you can get valuable items to sell on the market such as the color album, sapphire, and etc. If you don't like using silver farmer character like Rachel, you can also use Zealot, Plat Doctor, and Deputies for Cleric, and Pyromancer, Omiyoji, and Quartermancer for Wizard. I personally find this to be a pretty efficient as the Rachel build in silver farming category, but if you have any good warrior or archer silver farming builds, feel free to let me know in the video comment below. I would love to test it out and add it to my build collections as well as showcasing it in the future videos. Well, that is all for the DPS, support, and silver farming role. For the next part of this video, I'm going to talk about how to gear up your character efficiently for early, mid, and late game. If you're new or recently returned to the games, I highly recommend checking out two specific rated posts by Luna Pelmoon, which include refers for new or returning players version 3.0 and updated leveling guide version 4.0. These two posts will keep you updated or answer some of the questions that you might have related to the game. But more importantly, if you're looking for a fast way to level up, I highly suggest looking into updated leveling guide version 4.0. The early game is pretty straightforward for the most part. This is where the game teaches you the basic stuff such as how to use class systems, market systems, skill customization, repair gears, dungeon systems, selling items, and how status is applied based on the classes that you choose, and etc. The game process is not complicated for early game because all you have to do is talk to Lena, the wing of Vibora NPC. 
In Capeta, to obtain specific Kedora level equipment box between level 40 all the way to 350. I also recommend taking advantage of the priest buff in town which operate by players. This shop will apply additional damage to your basic and skill at the same time. You will be able to deal more damage without having to spend your silver to and build or upgrade your gears. Additionally, make sure to drop by the Demon Prison District 2 between level 130 all the way to 230. This is the best place to level up your characters and farming silver at the same time. The monster population in this map is extremely high and they drop a lot of valuable items such as normal equipment, equipment recipe, and gym abrasives. The normal equipment and recipe can be sold for silver through the in-town NPC. These items are not that valuable in terms of collecting, but you can make a pretty good amount of silver to fund your character later on into the game. On a side note, the tumor braces can be sold for a decent amount of silver on the market as well. And speaking of the market, it is not that important for early game because it is highly affected by token. You can purchase token with TP, buying it off on the market, or getting one free from the event. Without the token, you cannot list more than 2 items on the market. You cannot set specific price on the market, and there is a wait time to receive the item after you sold it the items on the market. At this point, I highly recommend saving the Abrasive Gym to upgrade specific gems like red, blue, green, or yellow, since this gym are essential for your character late game gear progression. The other option to obtain gears for your character is either buying off on the market or farming one from the hunting ground. Starting off with the market, this option can be very situational depending on your class choice because certain classes equipment are more favorable than the other one, which means that your chance of spotting your class equipment at a low level is much lower than finding equipment on the most popular class. However, you can easily spot a random identified low level gears with high transcendence stage bonuses on the market, and with this type of equipment, you can easily boost your damage output at a low silver investment, which of course, you might or will have to invade those equipment to gain a better damage bonuses compared to Kedora equipment for Lena. As for the hunting ground, it's a type of dungeon that focuses on farming and hunting. Now, this dungeon will have a higher chance of dropping unidentified gears compared to the open map. I personally do not recommend spending your time to farm specific class equipment, but if you have a lot of time on your hand, feel free to do so. Additionally, I also included a link to some of this open hunting ground area in the video description below, so feel free to check it out. For the mid game, which is between level 200 all the way up to 300, at this point, you should have some general idea how the challenge will work and teleporting around the world map. Additionally, you might want to consider working on the episode quest to retrieve the episode quest reward. Some of these rewards include attribute points, EXP car, enchantment car, specific NPC car, and image key accessory. The accessory is obtainable through episode 5, 6, and 7 quests. The accessory offers a decent amount of status like physical and magic attack for the bracelets, fits into all status, plus 30 critical ray for the necklace, and max HP, SP, and 2 additional movement speed by equipping all 3 pieces. By the time you have obtained a decent amount of attribute points from the episode quest, I recommend level up your skill attributes up to level 50 for most of your main attack and support ability. Now, the main reason why you want to keep it at level 50 because the cost of the attribute between level 1 up to 50 is much lower compared to getting one specific skill attribute all the way up to level 100. Not only you will be able to upgrade most of your skills, but you can also increase your damage output rotation for the mid game. Also, you should be using Kedora equipment between level 200 all the way to level 300, but you can also look for a better equipment with high transcendent stage bonuses on the market to increase your damage output even further. Finally, we are entering the late game stage as you level up your character between 320 up to 400. This is the point where you have enough knowledge about the game such as how to reset your character classes, get into a unique and legendary, learn more about anchor attractions, and finding the sweet spot to make silver for your character. Additionally, level 380 is the breakpoint where you have to decide which specific role that you are interested in. Like I said before, there are three specific roles in this game, just as DPS, support, and silver farming. If this is your first time or your first character, you should avoid building a support character because this will limit your assets to certain content that require a lot of in-game experience like a unique and legend ray. You will have a smaller skill pool to do damage and it will limit your farming capability to fund your character even further. Also, make sure to finish episode 11 quests to receive level 400 legendary Savito gear box. These boxes include transistors 10 with plus 11 add-view values and open socket gears, and this equipment can be transferred between characters. You will get 4 savvy equipment and 6 savvy weapon boxes upon completing episode 11 quests, so make sure to take advantage of this. The savvy nose equipment box are very important at this stage of the game based on the type that you choose. The play armor equipment is highly effective against physical damage monsters and bosses, and equipping 4 play armor will give you 20% physical damage reduction. Leather armor equipment is highly effective of boosting your damage, equipping 4 leather armor will give you 20% critical rate and 15% damage boost. 
A Car Armor equipment is highly effective against magical damage monsters and bosses and extremely good for support roles like Cleric. Not only that, equipping 4 Cloud Armors will give you 20% magic damage reduction. You can choose either play or leather armors, but I highly recommend getting the leather armor for DPS because you can easily replace the physical damage reduction with enchantments from the jewel. As for the weapon, you have an option between a two-hand user and a one-hand user. Two-hand user can use trinket which boosts their raw damage even further, while one-hand user have lower damage compared to two-hand user but have access to shield which increases their defense's capability. If you already choose the cloud armor, you might want to consider using one-hand weapon with shield to replace your lack of physical defense. However, this situation might apply differently based on the classes that you choose because some of the classes might use two-hand weapon and other classes might use one-hand weapon. I also recommend using the play armor for non clear classes because you will have a hard time to keep up restoring your HP compared to clear player who have access to a heal ability. This is optional so keep that in mind. As I mentioned before, the Sabidos gear from the equipment box will have open socket. I recommend adding gym to specific gears based on your class damage type such as physical and magic attack. For physical attack builds, you should add red gym onto the weapon, 5 red gym for the two-handed weapon plus 1 for the trinket, or 3 red gym for the one-handed weapon plus 3 for the shields. This also applies for magic attack builds as well but with blue gyms. 5 blue gym for the two-handed weapon plus 1 for the trinket, or 3 blue gym for the one-handed weapon plus 3 for the shields. As for the armor, I do recommend adding red gym to increase physical defense on cloth armor and leather armor, blue gym to increase magic defense on play armor, and green gym to increase critical race for glove and boot. Make sure to roast the gym before putting the gym into your equipment, otherwise you will receive some negative status for non roasted gyms. You can roast it by using alchemist shop which operate by players in town. The alchemist shop are easily spotted on channel 1 and channel 2 near the market area in Capetta. Keep the gym level between 5 to 7. Now, the reason why you want to do this is because you want to reserve your silver and invest them into Inker and Magnifier for Savidos gears. Now, the Magnifier is not a problem at all to obtain at the current stage of the game because you can purchase Magnifier at a cost of 100k silver per Magnifier for the market. There are simple ways to obtain Magnifier without having to spend silver, so the bet that include episode 12 match challenge modes, events, training wing of 5 water coins, and attending goddess screen events which trigger every time field boss Morimpodia is defeated by players. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, that is all for the part 1 of the gear progression guys, and I do apologize for not mentioning this part early in the videos, because I want you guys to enjoy the videos as much as possible, but also provide you some information throughout the videos. If you already noticed that this video is like 12 minutes long, and I don't want you guys to sit through the whole thing and feel overwhelmed at the end. Another reason is that I want to give the new and return players the time that they need to process down everything, because there is so much information in these videos. And with that being said, this is Sanoshi once again, and I will see you guys with part 2 very, very soon. Later!